there's a popular story about Mark Twain that uh, he and his wife went to the Holy Land to visit. And while there, he decided to take a moonlight cruise on uh, the Sea of Galilee. And he went down and asked a fellow how much it would be to be able to take a boat out for a little bit. And uh, a fellow said to him, it would be $25, which was a lot of money back then. And Mark Twain said, $25? And he walked away and he said, no wonder Jesus walked. Well, you know, there's a lot of uh, funny stories about Jesus walking on the water and uh, other people. And I'm going to spare you some of those those jokes about the preachers and the people who walked on the rocks and the step didn't know where the rocks were. And, and you all have heard all those. Uh, so I'll spare you that today. Uh, but there's a lot, there's a lot of jokes, but there's also a lot of books that have been written on this subject, sermons that have been preached on this subject. And if you go to a bookstore or you look on uh, Amazon, you'll find all kinds of books on how to walk on water, or how to get out of the boat, or how to step out on faith, or how to uh, be a person who is of great faith in those things. A whole lot on that. And uh, yet, uh, I, I want to say today, I wonder if that is the message that Matthew is trying to get across to us. I wonder if that's the message. Maybe there's something a little deeper than that. And I, I have preached that many times. And we think about the fact that one of my favorite stories. And, uh, you know, just before that we have the feeding of the 5,000. Where the disciples don't have enough to supply for everyone. And Jesus tells them, you give them something. For those of you that have watched the online sermon, uh, we preached on that. And so we see this great miracle and they learned this lesson of, of how that if we depend on God that God can supply our needs and do great things. And then Jesus tells them to get in the boat to go to the other side while he goes up to the mountain in the evening to pray. It's been a busy day. It's been a tiring day. And he wants some time alone. And that's a good example for us. But he wants some time just to relax, some time to meditate, some time to pray to the Father. And he sends the disciples and I guess says, I'll, I'll meet up with you later. Uh, doesn't tell them how he's going to meet up with them. Uh, the trains were probably not running that late. Uh, by the time it was 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, the fog probably was keeping the airplanes away. I don't know how he was. they thought he was going to catch up with them on the water. But... Basically, he says, you go on. And then the storm comes, this terrible, terrible storm. And they're out there rowing and towing in the midst of all of it. And Jesus comes walking on the water. And they see him and they see that at first they don't know what it is. It's kind of like in the midst of our lives when we have a hope or a dream that we need someone to rescue us or something to come and help us. And it's only a dream and we don't know if it will even come to pass. But we look out and we see and we hope that God is going to come through for us. And then he does. And Jesus comes to the rescue. And then there's Peter who uh, is known to to sometimes, like me, to act before he thinks. Lord, if it's you, let me come to you. And Jesus said, I think, with a sigh, okay, Peter, come. Peter comes, and as Johnny already said, for a while, just for a moment, everything seems fine. And then he sees this terrible wind and the storm and he takes his eyes off of Jesus and he begins to sink and he cries out, Lord, save me. And Jesus saves him. A wonderful story. And so 
The message, if the message today is for us that we need to keep our eyes on Jesus, and I think we do, then that's it. But maybe there's more to the story that God wants us to hear today. Maybe there's more to the story than just keeping our eyes on Jesus or about walking on water. Mike uh, Iaconelli, who used to write a theological satire magazine called The Wittenberg Door, he wrote an editorial a few years ago. I want to listen to these, this. He said, one of the most interesting things about kids' sporting events is the parents' reaction to their children. Would you agree? Any of you have kids in sports right now? Anybody? Well, it's always fun to watch sometimes. Not always. But recently, he said, I attended my daughter's track meet on the fourth and final lap of the boys' mile run. Everyone was clumped together except for the two front runners who were leading the pack by a few yards. As the runners came forward toward the finish line, the crowd began to cheer wildly. Just then, I happened to look about three quarters of a lap back. And there, hopelessly last, was a short, portly kid, chubby, who never should have walked a mile, let alone run one. His entire body was wobbling toward the finish line, and his bright red face was twisted in the kind of pain that made me wonder if death was near. Suddenly, I was brushed uh, I was brushed by a frantic parent who was leaping down the bleachers to rail to the rail surrounding the track. And it was obviously the boy's mother, and she yelled at the top of her lungs, Johnny, run faster! I will never forget the look of hopelessness on Johnny's face. He had to be thinking, run faster? What am I, an idiot? What do you think is the problem here? I just forgot to run faster? I'm running as fast as I can. You ever felt like Johnny? Here you are in Sunday worship. And you've been beat up all week by the world. You've been beat up by the storms of life. And you've done everything you know to do. But you feel like you're beat down and you're weary and you've been running. And then you come to church and you hear the sermon and the sermon is basically, run faster, Johnny. Do more, Johnny. And there are times that we need to hear that. And we're thinking, <laughs> I don't know if I can do any more. I don't know if I can fit any more in. I don't think if I can be any more. Well, today, you're in luck. That's not the message. I, I want you to hear from this text today. That's not what I want you to hear. And I don't really think that's really what Matthew wanted you to hear. I want to say this today. And I'm going to go out on a limb a little bit here, but I want to say this today. That there is safety in the boat. And there are times when we need to stay in the boat. Now, Peter got out of the boat. But let me ask you this. Did Jesus really want Peter to get out of the boat? Did he ask Peter to get out of the boat? Think about that. Did Jesus ask Peter to get out of the boat? Yes or no? No, he didn't. It was Peter who said, Lord, I want to get out. I want to walk on the water. And Jesus bids him, yeah, okay, come. And I imagine sometimes that we're kind of like that. With, with, we're like the little kids who say, Mommy, can I have this? Daddy, can I have this? Can I have this? And, and we're finally like, okay, whatever. We do that to God sometimes, you think? Do we say, Lord, I really want this job, or I really want to marry this person, or I really want this kind of life, or this kind of relationship? And we, and Jesus says, okay. Maybe that's not the best for us, but God allows it sometimes. And sometimes we do that to our children because we want them to learn the hard lessons of life. See, Jesus could have stopped the storm. 
Jesus could have kept them from being in the storm. And Jesus could have easily took Peter by the hand and walked him across that water. That would have been no problem. But maybe Jesus allowed him to come not because he was going to uh, brag on how much faith he had, but because he was going to teach him exactly the opposite. In fact, what did Jesus say to Peter? He didn't say, oh man, you've got great faith, Peter. But instead, he took him by the hand and he pulled him out of that water, shaking his head, I'm sure, saying, oh ye of little faith, why do you doubt? And it's more of a condemnation than a bragging, really, or a pat on the back. You know, the church is drifting in the midst of dark and turbulent waters today. We're facing a, a worldwide pandemic to which we haven't got a cure for yet. There's all kinds of race, racial division and tension and violence in our world. The church is struggling to, to be relevant and, and we're being told many times not to meet in person. But I think we need this boat. I think I need this boat. We need this boat of life. Because just imagine the church is a boat that's sailing on turbulent waters. And I don't know about you, there may be times when God calls you to come out and to step on the water, and if He does, you do it. But there's safety in this boat. There's people in this boat with us. There's brothers and sisters in this boat that are helping us, and Jesus is in the boat with us. And I believe that there's something about staying in the boat. God gave us the church. He founded the church. He gave us each other. And there is some, something to that. And I'm not always sure that, uh, we, that we should be stepping out. Now there are those times where, and there's different people in different places with different personalities. I understand that. We have those in our church like Peter who sometimes our faith is bigger than a brain. And we have some in our church who just wants to, everything to be calm. But most of us are in this storm of life. This thing we call life, which uh, sometimes everything seems to be going fine, then all of a sudden the bottom seems to fall out, and the storms are all around us, and we just don't know what to do. And we look around us and we say people, we see people like Peter, who seem to be, at least in our eyes, walking on water without a problem in the world. And we admire their faith. We look on Facebook and we see people with perfect lives, perfect homes, perfect hairdos, perfect clothes. And we wonder why we can't be like that. And by the way, perfect children. But the reality of it, it's, it's just a facade. Because every one of us, at one time or another, are like that little child, afraid of the storm. And we're just hoping, we're just praying that the storm will pass, or somebody will come up and sweep us into, our, into their arms. Some of you have read Sandy's story on Facebook. She stole my thunder a little bit today. That's okay. We were up on the strip mine not, uh, about a week or two ago. And we uh, were walking. We took uh, Parker up there. And we were walking around and hiking. And we came across this little dog. It was inside of a fence where the tower, radio towers were. And was very frightened and very, you could tell, had was a stray dog and, and you could see the bones coming through its sides. And as we got out of the car, we had Toby with us, our very friendly black lab. And we stood there for a minute and we noticed that there was a little place under the gate where the dog could come. So I, I could tell the dog was hungry, so I threw some food in there. 
and it came finally and ate the food. And after a few minutes, we began to walk up the hill, and we turned around, and the dog was following us, and actually following Toby. But everywhere we went, and everywhere Toby went, this little dog went. And we walked a long ways that day, and it never left us. And finally, you know, Sandy said, well, you know, we, we can't just leave this dog. And I said, okay. And we, I tried to get it to come to me, and it wouldn't. I put food down, and when I would go to pick it up, it would run away. It was so scared. And so we got in the truck, and I said, we'll just have to come back later or call someone. And we began to drive away, and through my rearview mirror, I see this little animal running toward the truck. So I stopped the truck, and I got out of the truck, got down once again, and it ran away. Got back in the truck, began to drive, and I looked back in my rearview mirror. There it is again. And I almost got it up to me, and someone shot a, a gun, and it took off a running. So by this time, we were close to the highway, and I began to almost go on the highway, and I looked back, and there it is again. I said, I'm going to try it one more time. So I got out of the truck, and this time, he actually let me pet him and then pick him up. And when I picked him up, I noticed there were ticks all over him, in his ear, in his body, he was scared, he was hungry. But we took this little dog home and gave it a bath and took him to the vet, got him some worm medicine because he had worms. Spent the whole night picking ticks off. And I think about that little dog and I think about the fact that in my own life, there's, that I was a lot like that little dog. Scared. Beaten by the world, betrayed by those who love me or I thought loved me, looking for a purpose, looking for someone to rest, excuse me. And then one day, I got a glimpse of a man named Jesus. And I didn't know if he was coming to, at that time, if he wanted to hurt me or to save me. But I found out he loved me. And I cried out, Lord, save me. And he did. I don't know how many times I've cried that same prayer. And every time, he's taken me in his arms. And then we come to Romans where Paul says, the word is near you. The word of faith which we preach. That if we just believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, that we shall be saved. And here's the thing. Now think about... Our little dog, we call him Ralphie. We gave him a name, Ralphie. Had Ralphie not gotten in, finally let me pick him up, we would have had to have left. And I don't know if we'd have ever found him again. But I know there's so many people out there who are hurting and people who are scared and people who are dying. And all he asks is that we just allow him to take us in his arms and to get on board and just say yes yes Jesus I, I, I want to come to you and I want you to come to me and I, I'm here Jesus is already waiting for us and it don't matter if it's if you've never been saved or maybe you've been saved a long time 
but you're drifting. And it seems like you're drifting farther away and not closer. And you can remember a time when, when you and Jesus were very, very close. But now it feels like you've drifted too far from the shore. I want you to know that God is coming to you. It may be the fourth watch, but He's there. If you'll just look out and recognize that. And be like Peter, even though he began to think he had enough sense, more than some of us, to cry out for help. Oh, how we're so stubborn sometimes that we'll allow sin and the devil to destroy our lives before we ever call out on God. And I would encourage you today to call on Him. Because He's the only one that can save you through the storm. Listen, if you don't hear anything else, hear this, is that the message that God wants us to know today is that we need Him. That we don't always have great faith. We can't walk on water. But He can. And He can deliver us if we we'll only call Him. So don't be afraid to call on Jesus today.